The Giraffe and the Pelly and Me by Roald Dahl Read by Hugh Laurie Not far from where I live, there is a queer old empty wooden house standing all by itself on the side of the road. I long to explore inside it, but the door is always locked, and when I peer through a window, all I can see is darkness and dust. I know the ground floor used once to be a shop, because I can still read the faded lettering across the front, which says, The Grubber. My mother has told me that in our part of the country in the olden days, a grubber was another name for a sweet shop. And now, every time I look at it, I think to myself, what a lovely old sweet shop it must have been. On the shop window itself, somebody has painted in white the words for sale. S-A-I-L. One morning, I noticed that for sale had been scraped off the shop window, and in its place, somebody had painted sold. S-O-L-E-D. I stood there, staring at the new writing and wishing like mad that it had been me who'd bought it, because then I would have been able to make it into a grubber all over again. I've always longed and longed to own a sweet shop. The sweet shop of my dreams would be loaded from top to bottom with sherbet suckers and caramel fudge and Russian toffee and sugar snorters and butter gumballs and thousands and thousands of other glorious things like that. Oh, boy, what I couldn't have done with that old grubber shop if it had been mine. On my next visit to the grubber, I was standing across the road gazing at the wonderful old building when suddenly an enormous bathtub came sailing out through one of the second-floor windows and crashed right onto the middle of the road. A few moments later, a white porcelain lavatory pan with the wooden seat still on it came flying out of the same window and landed with a wonderful splintering crash just beside the bathtub. This was followed by a kitchen sink and an empty canary cage and a four-poster bed and two hot water bottles and a rocking horse and a sewing machine and goodness knows what else besides. It looked as though some madman was ripping out the whole of the inside of the house because now pieces of staircase and bits of the banisters and a whole lot of old floorboards came whistling through the windows. Then there was silence. I waited and waited, but not another sound came from within the building. I crossed the road and stood right under the windows and called out, Is anybody at home? There was no answer. In the end, it began to get dark, so I had to turn away and start walking home. But you can bet your life nothing was going to stop me from hurrying back there again tomorrow morning to see what the next surprise was going to be.